and I welcome you to this series of videos on project ideas for computer science students. Here I am going to present three more interesting project ideas so that you can enhance your skills and utilize your analytical and programming abilities to solve some interesting problems. Let's recap the previous list of projects that we discussed so far. So in my first video I discussed five mini projects. These five mini projects which are good for beginners and after that in my second video I talked about Twitter sentiment analysis project. In this project you need to create a Twitter developer account and then work on JSON data to find the sentiment of a tweet. I hope you would have gone through the previous project ideas and liked them very much. Now I am going to present three more project ideas that are a bit more difficult than previous project ideas but I don't make it mandatory to solve the previous problems first so that you can directly start with the project that I am going to discuss now. If you have solved these previous problems, of course it's going to be more fruitful for you. So let's go through some of the tips before beginning with the new project ideas. First thing is to be motivated to solve some interesting problems. Second is to pick small project ideas and learn all the aspect of that project so that if you are asked about it in some interview, you should be able to answer it clearly. Sometimes a student copy the code and learn only concepts. But believe me that's not going to help you in any way. Because the interviewer will certainly ask you some basics that you will not be able to answer if you have not done the project on your own. Let me give you an example for this. Once I was taking Viva for a mini project where students were showing the sentiment analysis project. I suspected that most of them have copied so I should check their basics first and then I should go into further details. So I asked them some simple questions and the first question was from where you get the data for this project and believe me student was blank and could not answer it. Second question was in which format you get the data JSON or CSV. Again the student was blank and even couldn't tell me the difference between JSON and CSV. Then I asked about Twitter API and the data format it returns but again a student was blank. I did not ask much about the project but I was quite sure that the student has copied the project and has no idea about it. The next thing is all of you should use git and github for maintaining your project and if possible try to upload them to a cloud based platform. Heroku in this case. So I am not discussing this much in this video but you can go to website of Heroku and see what it means. Right? Now let's begin with project ideas and I will also tell you the things that you are going to learn from these projects and tips to solve these interesting problems. In case anything is left or you have additional questions you can always ask in the comment section. So our first project idea is to visualize sorting algorithms. Let's first look at the example after which you will get the complete idea of the project. So here is the visualizer and you can see there are multiple algorithms like insertion sort, selection, bubble, quick, merge, cell sort and here is a function to randomize the array. So and whenever I am clicking this randomize array, this is randomizing this array. You can change the size. So in this case you are seeing the numbers here, right? If you change the size you will see the lines only. So let me change the size again and you can see these numbers. So basically this is an array of number but here we are seeing these visualizations also. Right and from here you can either decrease the speed or increase the speed of animation. So how this animation works? Let's click on insertion sort first and let's reduce the speed so that you can see clearly how it works. So you can see 
it's picking one element and moving it in the forward direction right so if you look at this 18 it should be moved in the beginning right because every number before this 18 is greater than 18 so let's increase the speed a bit and let's move to 18 increase a bit now you can see 18 is moving in the forward direction right similarly at the end this 4 should be at the first place then 6 should be at the second place so let's increase the speed more and you can see how it is performing visualization and you are clearly able to see the way this insertion sort works right so if you skip forward it will sort the whole array at once and now you can randomize the array again if you want to apply quick sort or merge sort you can see how it works so let's reduce the speed you can see this much array is sorted right now it's going to pick another one so i hope you are clear about it how it is performing so i will post all the links in the description so that you can understand these in more depth and make your project right now you have seen the task that you need to perform so by implementing this project you will learn to implement sorting algorithms and working with web technologies specifically javascript so there are some tips for you so that you can handle this project easily so first try to implement simplest algorithm using javascript without any visualization so in this case you have to first implement the logic right then you can use visualization for that simplest algorithm and after that you can extend this logic for all algorithms and in this way you will be able to solve this project right now let's talk about second project where you need to extract media files specifically images from the json data of tweets and show them in a grid structure the project name is media extractor from tweets so basically what you have to do you have to create an input box where you can enter the keywords and hashtags and on that basis you need to download a tweet object using twitter api which we have already discussed in the twitter sentiment analysis project if you have any doubt you can go through that first and then come back to this project so what you have to do and what you are going to learn from this project you will learn working with twitter api you will learn the basics of python programming and web technologies and how you have to complete this project first was this twitter sentiment analysis tutorial so that you can understand working of twitter api then you have to create an interface where user can input some keywords and hashtags and after that you have to get the corresponding tweets maybe maximum 100 tweets and then extract the url from those tweet objects and download the images right and then you have to show those images in a grid form uh, let me show you an example so here is a example the way you have to show your images so you can show something like this right so this one grid is for one tweet you have to extract image from that tweet and so in this form you might avoid this animation at the moment but you have to show something like this in grid form clear in case any tweet uh, does not have any image you can simply ignore that but you need to handle it carefully right now let's talk about third project idea where we'll be analyzing the gps dataset that was collected in the microsoft research asia project the project name is geolife project and the data set was collected by 182 users in a period of more than five years so i am going to post all the links related to this project in the description so that you can easily access the resources and solve these interesting problem 
so let me show you the data set and the way you have to work on this project so here is the data set that is necessary for this project and this is GPS trajectory data set that was collected in the Microsoft Research Asia GeoLive project by 182 users in a period of over three years so I will post the link of this data set in the description you can download this data set and after downloading this data set if you extract it you will get 1.7 GB of data you can read the data set details here and if needed read the papers given in the description here you can see so after reading these interesting papers you will get some interesting ideas or interesting idea to solve these problems that can be solved using such data set but here I am not going to focus specifically on these papers I am going to give you my own problems that you need to work on and that will be basically analyzing the data set and handling these large data sets so what you have to do so first your task is to download the data set and understand it and then you have to create a graph showing users on x-axis and number of days for which data is present for that user on y-axis so basically we have a data set for 182 users and for each user we have multiple files so let me show you the files first so here you can see I have data and this is for first user if I go inside trajectory you can see these are some latitude and longitude for a particular user at a time stamp and so on you can see right so this is for one day similarly for another day you can go to another file and so on let me pick another file maybe this one or maybe some another file there is one more file here labels.txt if you open this file you can see there is a transportation mode available here so user is telling whether he is going through bike, bus, he is walking, he is going through subway and so on. So these are transportation mode also. And then there is trajectory. One important thing here is that every user has some trajectory. So if you see this user 125, it has 57 items here. So this means there are 57 trajectories right if you pick another user maybe this user you can see there are around 706 tra uh, trajectories so every user has a different amount of trajectories right which means that amount of data that was collected for each user was different clear so what we have to do we have to create a graph showing users on x-axis users on x-axis means you can show their IDs like 0, 1, 2 and so on up to 181 because we have 182 users and the number of days for which data is present for that user on y-axis so basically you have to count the number of days for which data is present for that particular user now you have to create a web interface where you have to create a drop down for user IDs so basically in a drop down you will have numbers starting from 0 to 181 so you need to select those and so various kinds of analysis for that particular user so if I am selecting one from that drop down you have to show some figures for that user if I am selecting two you have to show those feature, figures for second user and so on so what I have to do or what you have to do for that particular user so first thing is we need to show the trajectory of that particular user on world map for a particular date so basically you have to first select the ID of that particular user from the drop down and once ID is selected on that basis it will select number of dates right or uh, it will show a drop down having a number of dates again you have to select that particular date whichever you are interested in and then on that basis you have to and on that basis you have to present or you have to show the trajectory of that particular user on world map so there should be a world map and if user it was at this place at some point of time you have to make a point at this place 
mark one here because that was uh, first point where user was present then again if user was uh, at this place at uh, second uh, point of time then you have to start one line from here and connect it to this point and write two at this place then three then four and so on so you have to show the trajectory of that particular user on a particular date clear after that you have to show the transposition after that you have to show the transportation mode and corresponding distance and time spent by that particular user so if there is a transportation mode available that is fine you have to show the corresponding distance traveled by that particular transportation mode and you have to show the time spent by that particular user but if there is no transportation mode then you have to handle this error very gently right and after that we need to find out the users who traveled most by walking so you can take average walking distance uh, like uh, if a user has data present for five days and another user has present and another user had data present for 15 days you just need to calculate the distance walking distance and then you have to uh, calculate the average of that right so in this way you can find out the users who traveled most by walking right so this is very interesting project and i hope it will be most difficult of these three projects but it will be a project where you can learn the most of the things and it will be a project where you can learn most of the things so you can understand how you can handle gps data and a large amount of data right so guys i hope you would have liked these project ideas and discuss them with your friends and in the comment section of this video in case you find anything problematic don't forget to subscribe the channel for such interesting content and also share it with your friends and colleagues in case you have some interesting ideas post them in comment section so that everyone can take their benefit now let's wind up this video see you in the next video guys till then thank you so much